Okay, so as I said before, I'm I'm not a mechanic, I'm not a qualified engineer or anything, but um, this is the first Nissan Audi 28 I've ever played with, first diesel actually ever, and I couldn't find much in the way of um, watching material. Like I, I'm a visual learner, not really. Um, I can read the manuals and stuff, but I learn way better just actually watching and figuring it out. So. I read the manual a few times, I had a couple of goes, and I thought I'd videotape myself setting the timing, the engine timing and the injection pump timing on the LD28 and hopefully it helps someone else. Cheers. Right, so timing the LD28, you put that timing mark that you see through the peephole in the um, sandwich plate, and there's a mark on the, um, whether it's a flywheel or a flexi plate, there's a mark on there. So you can see those two marks there lining up. Then on the crank, you've basically got these two lobes pointing up. So that down there tells you that this is on compression stroke, top dead center on number one. Those two lobes pointing up is where you want this to be. And then you can hardly see it, but I don't know if I'll get the angle right, but in there, as a little lug like if I, I wonder if I can get to it from the back very hard to see but you can see that mark there that clear mark like it's quite dark at the back and then you've got a clear mark well that mark there needs to line up with if we can see it that gap there see that see that little gap there those two marks need to line up see that mark there the gap then you've roughly got it top dead center compression stroke number one those two marks lined up you want them as close as possible on there and then we'll go from there now when you're putting your chain on this will have to move slightly forward and backwards just to line the chains up and depending on how far it is that way if, the, if your lug is all the way over here for those chains to line up, then it means that your chain is too slack and you need to replace it. You want it kind of dead smack on the center, or you want the little divot bit this side of the lug, this side of the line. And then it means the chain's nice and tight. You've got this little countersunk bit there that goes on that way. Now on the chain, you can see you've got two different colored links. So you've got all the linkages and then you've got that one there. And that one there. Those two there are different to the others. Those are your timing marks. Now we know that the crank is 100% top dead center. So on that little pulley there, you've got a hole, try and focus on it, right there. One of those different cut of links goes on there, and then it should line up with that one there on the other colored link. The hole itself is kind of bang smack in the middle of that that different coloured link there and then when you come up here you can see that that one there is bang smack in the, the middle of that one there so that there is timed so now all you need to do is uh, set the tensioners when I took that off I uh, cable tied it so it's under tension, so when I put it back on, all I do is cut the cable tie and it'll put it.
So there you go. That's tensioner on, guides are on. There's quite a bit of tension on, on that chain as is, and that's not adjusting the guides. So that chain is pretty good. So like I say, that link there is on the divot. That link there is on the divot. That little gap through there, if we can see it again, is pretty much exactly where it needs to be. You can see the divot in the pulley and then the mark on the back. And that's where it needs to be through there. So now what we do is just rotate it a couple of times. And then recheck it. As you can see at the back, that one there is where it needs to be. That one there is still exactly where it needs to be. That divot is still there. The chain will move. So, you know, because they rotate at different speeds, the top and the bottom, those two links on the chain will move around. But that's the motor timed. Everything is where it needs to be. Nothing hits because of compression on these things. These things are like 22 to 1. So uh, that's it timed. Right, when it comes to um, timing the injection pump, you want to make sure that your motor is already timed, and I've already been through that, so that timer mark is spot on, that timer mark in there is spot on, and then you know the motor is timed completely, utterly where it needs to be. The pump itself has a little timing mark around the back here. <coughs> you can see that there, so what you want to do is you want to line up that mark there and that mark there and temporarily tighten that down then what I did was I came around here to the crank and at some point they're going to want you to rotate it between 15 and 20 degrees so I just put a mark on the crank pulley at 20 degrees so I know when I turn it and that's top right up the top then that's the 15 to 20 degrees that they want you to move it now the other thing is the Audi, the Audi 20 and Audi 28 use the same pulley. So you have different marks, like you've got this mark here, this mark here, A and B, and then this mark here. So with the Audi 28, you don't want to use the one that marked A and B. You want to use this one over here. That one there sits on the keyway of the pump itself, and that's the one you want to use for the Audi 28. And this mark here is where you'll put your belt. So ignore the other one. We want to go for this one and this one. Now the other thing is the belts themselves. Um, lucky it wasn't my toe. Um, they got to be 20 portions of the belt apart. So each one of these is what they call a portion or a tab of the belt. Some of the belts have marks and they didn't, so I marked this one. So you can see that one there. And then 20 of those tabs later is that one there. And that will help you mark it as well. So we'll move on from there. Okay, now we've got the pump temporarily tightened up with the mark around the back lined up. We've got the engine completely timed. I've put a mark on here at 20 degrees, so... At some point we're going to rotate that between 15 and 20 degrees. I've got the tensioner on and it's already locked in. So as soon as I loosen this, it'll release and put tension on the belt itself. The pump is on and we know that we're using that mark there and that mark there, not the AV one. So I marked them. That one there, that one there. There's a little mark there. We've marked 20 tabs on the belt and that belt's going to sit in that groove next to that one and in that groove next to that one. Now that that there has got a little bit of a, a cam in it so just be careful you don't have your fingers through it when you're winding it around because it will snap around and that bolt there is um, tightened to 43 to 51 um, foot-pounds of torque. 
So we'll get the belt on and then release the tensioner and then go from there. Right, so there you go. That there is lined up with that tab. That one there is lined up with that tab. Tension is on and that's in place. Next step. Okay, next step. They want you to remove the um, air vent cap, screw, whatever it is, at the back of the pump. It's, it's a 12 mil. I've already loosened it, but you want to remove that and pull that out. Now that the screw's out, you've got to put a dial gauge on the back of it. You can see in there, I just stuck in there a little, like a cut-off screw, which took up most of the depth of that thing. The needle of, of this dial gauge would go in there, but I wasn't sure if it was bot bottoming out or not. So I put a little screw in that hole, which hopefully I can get back out again, and then um, put the dial gauge on it. Now. I'm not a mechanic. This is literally the second time I've done this. And the first time, I don't think I did it right. So don't be, you know, don't be overwhelmed by it. it it's quite a simple process. But all we're going to do now is turn that motor 15 to 20 degrees. That's why I put the mark on it, because I didn't the first time, and I just kind of guessed it. Then we're going to come around here, and we're going to zero out the gauge. And then we're going to rotate the motor two times and see if we've got 0.75 of a mil is ideal. If we don't, then we rotate that whole assembly with that mark there until we do. And then theoretically, that's our pump spot on. If you understand. <laughs> Now we come around here and we zero out our gauge. We will focus in a minute, but I'm pretty sure that's us. Zero it out. You can even see my safety clocks in that. Right, so we've turned the motor over two times now, so theoretically the, the dial gauge should be 0 0.75 mil. You can be plus or minus. 0 0.00, 0 mil. If it's not, then all you do is just loosen this off and adjust that up and down until it is. But as you can see, that's absolutely spot on. So I must have done it right because that's perfect. And like I say, if it's not, you just adjust that either side of that mark and it doesn't take much for that that needle to move but that there is the engine timed and the diesel pump timed pretty happy with that <laughs> 